Hello everybody, my name is Evelyn and I have an update today for the energies of Libra New Moon that occurs uh, on the evening of Wednesday the 6th of October just before midnight. So the new moon this month is in cardinal energy, action energy. And it is supported by the continuing challenging squares to Uranus and to Pluto. So expect changes. This is an action month. Conversely, in Libra, it's time to rebalance our own energies. And it's also time to forgive those who have different views to us. How dare they? How could they, could they be so stupid? But let's forgive those who have differing views to us because if this, in this way, we can address some collective karma. There are new energies coming in. Remember, our Earth is rotating in a, a place in the galaxy it's never been before, certainly not in our lifetimes. And so it's time to embrace the changes and visualize the future we would like to experience. Remember, the power of our minds and our own energy is much greater than we've been led to believe. So this new moon is in Libra at 13 degrees, close to midnight on Wednesday, the 6th of October, Australian time. Joining this sun-moon connection, is Mars giving it greater energy. So where does this occur in your chart? This is cardinal energy. So it's an action energy. Where will you have the extra energy on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and for the rest of the week? So Libra is about balance. And we need to restore some balance into this chaos. What is fear? What is the truth? Libra energy stands for equality, negotiation, and appreciating the opposite point of view. Do you have personal connections with someone who has a very different opinion to you? Can you appreciate and understand their perspective without having to agree with it? Remember, love is the energy we all need to find within our hearts and negotiate with others to find a solution that will benefit us all. After some time of these heavy planets going in what we perceive as a retrograde motion, October is a powerful month for some of the heavies to be going direct. So Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter are all changing direction and moving forward again in October after periods of retrograde motion, where reflection and reworking of energies has been occurring. Expect changes, sudden changes, embrace changes. It's much easier than resisting them. Ask yourself how you can adapt to these changes constructively in your life. And so with these continuing challenging planetary energies, and I'm specifically referring to the Saturn square Uranus configuration, which dominates this year. How are we experiencing that? The final square between Saturn, Saturn and Uranus occurs just around Christmas Day, after which Saturn, being the fast-moving planet, will move on, and Uranus will continue to wield his influence on the Earth energies. This square provides energy for the masses, Uranus, to resist the top-down control, Saturn. Uranus in Taurus is also wielding changes in the way we manage Earth-related activities. Add to that mix, there is a square between the dwarf planet Eris 
the warrior sister of Mars, and Pluto in Capricorn. Eris was a goddess of strife, discord, contention, and rivalry. Her energy is contending with Pluto, the top-down control energy currently in Capricorn, demanding compliance to rules and regulations and wanting to exercise power and control. This volatile combination, along with Mars joining the sun and moon in this next few days, enables us to experience the continuing discord between the governments and the people. I'm told that the outer planetary bodies have more power than the inner. So we can expect more trouble and strife. And in the long run, expect some progress towards a better balanced society. You may be one protesting against the government imposed restrictions, or you may be engaged in more surreptitious, but nevertheless powerful resistance. Or you may simply be sitting on the sidelines being very anxious about the changes occurring and just wishing for peace to reign again. Understand that we need to have chaos to find a new balance. Some of those interesting people to whom I listen, liken the experience that we're having to that of the birth canal, where it is dark and difficult. But there is light at the end and the future will be much easier. The question is, just how long is this birthing process? Many of us are indeed over it. We can best help ourselves at this time by simply going within, meditating, and creating in our imaginations the future we would all like to experience. Remember, energy follows thought. It will not be like life as we experienced before this chaos. So how can we make it better and more equitable for everyone? Focus on what you can do and let go of activities that you cannot do. It's really helpful to have an active project where you can really direct your energies. And this tends to soothe your anxiety because your energy is focused on one thing. The beings acknowledge that there are those who are struggling to survive. But biz jobs, businesses, finances and so on are collapsing. But they assure us that there are new ways of being approaching. For some people, this can be an opportunity to pivot and pursue an opportunity that is much more appealing than our current way of earning an income. Maybe you know someone in this situation and can be an encouraging voice to help them adjust their direction and rebalance their life. Or maybe it's you who needs to make the adjustment. If you're not doing what gives you joy, or if what you're doing doesn't give you joy, ask yourself, why are you doing it? What adjustments can you make? On the other hand, there are those who are doing very well, thank you. And if you are one of those, be grateful and thank the universe or whatever higher being you believe in. Find ways to help others who do need support as they make their adjustments. Libra is about balance, equality, harmony, counselling, relationships. And remember that we have incarnated with all the energy and skills we need to deal with the changes that are manifesting and we are experiencing. And sometimes we just need to be reminded, you know, when we're in the pits and you just think, where am I going? There's not the money to, no money to buy food. I don't know where I'm gonna get a job. I've been there and lived through it and you can too. Apart from the big 26,000 year cycle shift, we are moving from Pisces into Aquarius energy. 
in Pisces, we had division, separation, and decrees. In Aquarius, we have inclusion, synthesis, and consensus. Let's focus on the Aquarian behavior. Now, what about Uranus in Taurus in action? This has been perfectly illustrated recently by the biggest earthquake in Victoria, 5.9 on the Richter scale, and also the volcanic eruption currently occurring in Las Palmas in the Canary Islands, which is continuing as I, as I prepare this, and apparently increasing in its intensity and activity. There is some concern that this volcano might generate a tsunami that would reverberate on the east coast of America. Who knows? The unexpected earthquake in Victoria illustrates the sudden activity heralded by Uranus. Aftershocks, magnitude 2.9 and 3, are continuing as I write this, as I, as I record this. Now, from an energetic perspective, can we ask if the earthquakes are a reflection of the anger and frustration of the Victorians? Remember, we are magnets bringing the energy that we are feeling inside. Now, are you aware that there's a fuel shortage in the UK? Is this to do with mercury retrograde, you think? As I understand it, the shortage is due to the lack of drivers available, and they're currently training army personnel to drive these petrol tankers. But, you know, if you extrapolate the effects of lack of transport, this could also apply to food availability. After all, large trucks are required to deliver food to supermarkets from where many people get their food. With borders in Australia restricted and some delivery drivers on strike, we are feeling that pain here too. However, lack of fuel or food does not compare with the inability of delivery services to deliver goods brought online. You know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if we can't get our online orders, that's less important than not being able to get food. Is this an illustration of Mercury retrograde? Because this energy does disrupt transport and communications. Or is it a reflection of the ongoing chaos? And we had a Facebook outage in the last 24 hours. What? That's never happened before. However, did we manage without Facebook? Back up your contacts, folk, if you want to keep them. How long do we know it's going to be up? Do we know when it might just go down completely? Remember, there are other platforms for communication. And if you have not already investigated alternative communication platforms, maybe it's the time to do that. We are living in times of change. And you know what gets restricted pops up somewhere else. What else can you prepare for? Last Friday, I had a personal experience of Mercury retrograde. I had arranged for a piano to be collected from point A to be de delivered to point B. All seemed fine on a Friday afternoon. At mid-afternoon, the delivery company phoned me and they said, oh dear, they have an issue with a COVID incident and they had to rearrange the schedule and the drivers. And so by the time they arrived to pick up her piano, they couldn't access the warehouse. And numerous phone calls later, it was all resolved, but it was not a smooth process. Here I am on the Gold Coast trying to coordinate 
with Victorian activity as the warehouse is closing. Now, can you recall any experiences in your life which illustrate Mercury retrograde in the last few days? It goes direct again on the 18th, 19th of October. Now, hovercraft. Hovercraft, we generally associate with uh, vessels that are on the water that seem to move very quickly. But I've been recently listening to a fellow called David Wilcock, who I find quite interesting, even if he is a bit, um, he seems to have a bit of verbal diarrhea. But there are gems in amongst all the words he uses. And I find many of his ideas very interesting and inspiring. In a sea of doom and gloom, he offers hope. Oh, I'm such a Pollyanna. Ah. But I do believe that eventually good will prevail. David discusses a hovercraft project. He and his colleagues are using proven technology released by the US military, according to him. And his plan is to create hovercraft units that operate with energy fields using free energy. What? This technology has actually been available for many years, but has never been released to the general public. Why not? So sad. There's no money to be made if they do that. You know, when I traveled to Victoria in happier times and hired a car from the airport in Melbourne, I was often allocated a vehicle with Queensland plates. And so people said, oh, is that your car, Evelyn? And I'd say, oh, no. Or maybe, oh, yes, this is a car. This is my car, but it's sprouted wings. And I'd flown from Coolangatta and touched down in Melbourne and then I'd driven. So it was a bit of a story. I had a vision in my mind back then. I'm not sure that I envisaged that technology would make it available quite so soon, and it may be a while still. But yes, folk thought I was crazy. But you know, maybe I'm not. Who knows? If I'm crazy, it gives you permission to be who you are. You know that, don't you? So be open to the new energy sources that will be presenting themselves. Some will not work well. Others will replace the fossil fuels we currently use. And I do know that free energy has been available for many years, but it has not yet been released. Look out for coming changes. I want to talk briefly about division as against unity. There is a force, there is an energy in our world which is causing people to separate and to become quite divided. You know, united they stand, divided they fall. So let's separate them all so we can dominate them. Really? Oh, Evelyn, you've got to be crazy. And it is, it is easy for some to blame others for this global dilemma. It's easy to point a finger at someone who's made a different health choice. How dare you? We attract what we have in our energy fields. How about we all focus on creating harmonious energy, accepting energy, compassionate energy. Remember that we're all making the choices we feel are best for ourselves and our community. We walk in our own shoes and sometimes it is necessary to walk in the shoes of another to understand that we all make the best choices we can with the information that we have. If we can practice forgiveness of ourselves and others, this will contribute significantly to redeeming the group karma and hasten our ability to ascend and make positive progress towards a happier world. 
understand this chaos we're experiencing has been prophesied by many, many different belief systems all over the world, including the book of Revelations in the uh, Christian Bible. And so in this energy of Libra, can we find it in ourselves to seek cooperation with others and find those things we have in common that keep us together? More than ever at this time, we need to be united. You know, there's actually more of us than those actually in government and pushing the power and control agenda. Remember yoga breathing. I was amused recently when teaching a new student how to breathe correctly. And having taken a few breaths very successfully and fluidly, she exclaimed, wow, Evelyn, that's better than taking Valium. Really? Take my YouTube channel for full yoga breathing and practice it if you haven't already done so. Yoga classes. When my housemate Bill Marie moved to Sydney a few months ago, I offered to teach her beach yoga classes. I'm still teaching on the beach. I never think I never thought I would. It is a delightful experience, despite an early morning start on Tuesdays. So if you happen to be on the Gold Coast, I teach a class on Tuesday at six o'clock in the morning at Mermaid Beach. And at, on Saturday, I teach two classes at Broad Beach, one at seven o'clock in the morning and another one at half past eight. Tell your friends, come yourself. I'm very grateful to Brett Carnell and his Beaches social group, thank you, Brett, for involving me and helping me spread this word. Classes are usually followed by coffee and chats and that's lots of fun. You know, if you are in a space where you cannot physically get to a yoga class, there are many, many available online. And I do encourage you to seek a class that works for you. There's many, many styles of yoga and that my, my style may not suit you. It's so important more than ever before to keep that body moving. I do have online classes on Zoom that you can do anytime, anywhere, any place. So I encourage you, move the body. That's all for this Libra energy. Enjoy the elegance, the luxury, the nice aspects of Libra and be forgiving, compassionate, kind, loving in all your relationships. Till next time, bye for now.